Today is our second day talking about slash reviewing the potential real world applications of the work that we have done solving separable and linear ODEs. And today we're going to focus on those infamous mixing problems. So we're going to set up and solve some ODEs representing the mixture of two, of two chemical solutions. I emphasize chemical solution so you don't get mixed up with a mathematical solution, for example. Now, all of our examples were just for simplicity's sake going to talk about salt dissolved in water. But there's really nothing stopping you from using the techniques outlined in this video to apply to basically any chemical solution. The only situation where you might run into some problems is if when your solutions are mixed, there's some kind of chemical reaction that affects the outcome. But if you're just mixing two chemical solutions that don't react, that just have different concentrations of some dissolved substance, then this technique that we're about to talk about is going to apply. Okay, so we're going to break these problems down into two different cases. First, we're going to consider the case where the amount of liquid in the mixing tank remains constant at all times. So the total amount of fluid going into the tank is equal to the total amount of fluid being drained out of the tank. The tank will never empty or overflow. So, a large tank initially is filled with 500 gallons of pure water. Now last time, I very foolishly used the letter S to represent the amount of salt in the tank, uh, which, was, which was foolishness because S is used for seconds. So let's just go ahead with A and use A to represent the amount of salt in the tank. Now because the tank is initially filled with 500 gallons of pure water, the initial amount of salt in the tank is definitely zero. No salt in that water at all. But things change over time. Over time, brine is being poured into the tank containing two pounds of salt per gallon. And the fluid is being pumped into the tank at a rate of five gallons per minute. Then the well-mixed solution between the brine and the pure water is being pumped out at an equal rate of five gallons per minute. Now these problems, seriously, I seriously recommend always, always starting with a diagram. Every once in a while, I'll run across a student with a real stubborn streak who says, oh, I don't think I need to start with the diagram. I'm above all of that. You can always try it. I mean, it won't do me any harm, but I, for your sake, recommend always start these mixing problems with a little sketch of what's going on to help you to visually organize the information. So here we have salt water coming into the tank and the rate of flow of this brine is five gallons per minute. The concentration of this brine is given by two pounds salt per gallon. Meanwhile, the mixture is being drained out of the tank at an equal rate of five gallons per minute. But the concentration of this mixture is currently unknown. Now let's try and set up a differential equation for the quantity called A, the pounds of salt in the tank at time t. So differential equation, let's start with A prime. Let's think about how the amount of salt in the tank would change over time. And there are two ways for the salt in the tank to change. It can change as a result of salt coming in, and it can change as a result of salt going out. So the question is, how much salt is coming into the tank and how much salt is leaving the tank? Now, if you want to know the amount of salt that's coming in, we can look at the fluid that's flowing into the tank. And we can take the rate of the fluid flow 
five gallons per minute and multiply it by the concentration of salt in that fluid. So multiplying the rate of the fluid flow, 5, by the concentration, 2, we get the rate of change of salt coming into the tank. Salt coming into the tank is given by 10 pounds per minute. Now the rate of salt going out of the tank could be calculated in a similar way. You can take the flow rate of the fluid, also 5, and multiply it by the concentration. But at the moment, we don't know what the concentration of the fluid leaving the tank is actually going to be. So let's take some time and try and figure out what expression we could write to represent the concentration. Now, concentration in general, chemically, can be found by taking the amount of the substance and dividing it by the amount of liquid in which we have dissolved that substance. Now fortunately for us, we have called the amount of salt in the tank the quantity called A. So we just need to figure out what is the amount of liquid in the tank. Well, the tank is initially filled with 500 gallons of liquid. And over time, the amount of liquid that goes into the tank is an exact match to the amount of liquid that is poured out of the tank. So the amount of liquid in the tank will never actually change. It will always be equal to 500 gallons. So the amount of liquid is 500. And now we have an expression representing the concentration of the salt water that is being pumped out of the tank. And with this, we can fill in our ODE. A prime is equal to 5 times 2, so that's 10, minus the flow rate out of the tank multiplied by the concentration of the fluid leaving the tank, which is A over 500. So now we have a linear ODE, which can be solved using the method of integrating factors. So first, let's make sure that the ODE is written in standard form, which requires both A and A prime to be on the left side of the equation. Remember integrating factors? We called the function multiplied by a the function p. In this case, p is a function of time, so I'll call it p of t. And the lonely function left on the right side of the equation, the function with no a's attached, was the one that was called f. We calculated an integrating factor called u, which was equal to e to the integral of the p function with respect to time. And then our function a satisfied the equation that if you took the integrating factor and multiplied it by a, then that was the same thing as the integral of the integrating factor times the function f of t on the right side. So let's go ahead and calculate what this integral would be. That's the next step. And that would be equal to, I suppose, 1,000 e to the t over 100 plus an unknown constant. And therefore, solving for a, we would have 1,000 plus c e to the negative t over 100. To determine the value of c and then to finish the problem by finding a, Let's go ahead and use the fact that at time t equals 0. At time t equals 0, there was no salt in the tank at all. 
So if I replace both t and a with 0, I find that the c value must be negative 1,000. And therefore, in answer to the question, the function that tells me the amount of salt in the tank at any given time is 1,000 minus 1,000 e to the negative t over 100. I could plug in t in minutes, and then I would be given an output of a in pounds of salt. All right, let's consider a similar example, except this time the problem is complicated because two solutions are being pumped into the same tank. So, as always, I'm going to suppress my pride and I'm going to draw a diagram. We have brine still pumped in at a rate of five gallons per minute, just like last time, with a concentration, just like last time, of two pounds of salt per gallon. But at the same time, brine is also being pumped into the tank from another pipe, this time at a rate of one gallon per minute, this time at a concentration of one pound of salt per gallon. The well mixed solution is being pumped out at the rate of six gallons per minute. Concentration to be determined. So in this case, just like in the previous problem, the flow rate in, in total from both of these two sources, in total, fluid is coming into the tank at a rate of six gallons per minute. Five gallons from one pipe, one gallon from another pipe. And an equal amount of water slash fluid is being pumped out of the tank, also six gallons per minute. So initially, our tank contained 500 gallons of pure water, so no salt and 500 gallons of liquid. And because the flow rate in, in total, is the same as the flow rate out, that amount of liquid is not going to change at any given time. And therefore, the concentration of the fluid leaving the tank can be found the same way as it was in the previous example. Take the amount of salt in the tank and divide it by the amount of fluid in the tank, five, A over 500. Now once again, let's set up an expression for A prime, which as always is changing as a result of two different things, the salt in and the salt out. So the salt in is coming from two different sources, the brine from the first pipe and the brine from the second pipe. So let's combine the salt from these two sources to get the salt in. The first source has a fluid rate of 5 gallons per minute and a concentration of 2 pounds per gallon. So that's contributing 2 times 5 pounds of salt per minute. Meanwhile, the second pipe, we have 1 gallon per minute fluid flow, a concentration of 1 pound per gallon. So we have and more salt entering at a rate of one times one pounds of salt per minute. And for the salt leaving, the fluid flow is six and the concentration is A over 500. So if I clean that up, what is my expression for A prime? My expression for A prime is equal to 11 minus, I guess we can call this 3 over 250, A. After the setup, the 
actual solving process is a lot like it was before. Replace, rearrange everything so it's in standard form. Find your integrating factor. Set up your integrating factor equation. Calculate the integral. Solve for A. And then use the initial condition to find C. I suppose I should, at this point, actually calculate the value of this fraction. I don't know why, why I put it off so long. And so a of t is given by 2750 divided by 3 minus 2750 divided by 3 e to the power 3 over 250 times t negative. That just comes from replacing the c in this expression with the c that we calculated using the initial condition. As you may be able to imagine, you can sort of extend this process to an arbitrary number of pipes flowing into or even out of the tank. All that you have to do is find the concentration of the fluid coming through each particular pipe and then multiply the fluid flow rate by the concentration and combining all the different sources of salt coming in versus salt going out. So let's consider a slightly different variety of problem. What if the rate of fluid into the tank is not a match to the rate of fluid out of the tank? So for example here, everything is basically exactly the same as it was in the previous problem, but there's one significant change. The only change from the previous problem is that the well mixed solution is being pumped out at a rate of 7 gallons per minute instead of 6 gallons per minute. So to reflect the fact that almost nothing has changed, I'm going to go uh, copy paste slash steal the diagram from before and then I'm just going to make this one change in that diagram. Okay, so I've stolen the diagram from the previous problem. Everything is exactly the same as it was, except for the important difference that the flow rate out is larger than the combined flow rate in. So although the amount of fluid in the tank was initially 500, it's being drained at a rate of one gallon per minute. So the fluid in the tank at time t is equal to 500 minus t, minus the number of minutes that have passed, because every minute the number of gallons of fluid in the tank decreases by 1. So I'm going to make a note of that. The amount of fluid in the tank is now a function of time. And this, in turn, is going to have an effect on our expression for the concentration of the brine being poured out. The amount of salt in the tank is still just being represented by A, but this time, when we divide by the fluid in the tank, we're dividing by the non-constant function 500 minus the time. That's really the only significant change. The most significant change is that this time, to find the concentration of the fluid flowing out, we have to divide by a function of time. 
because the amount of fluid in the tank is changing. But all the other basic principles are the same. The salt in, salt out can still be found by taking the fluid rate and multiplying it by the concentration. So salt in has not changed at all. It's still 11 pounds per minute. And then for the salt out, the fluid flow rate is seven and we're multiplying that by A divided by 500 minus T. So let's rearrange this and let's try and solve it carefully. So now we have A prime plus seven divided by 500 minus T times A is equal to 11. So this time, to find our integrating factor, we're gonna have to take e to the integral of seven divided by 500 minus t. So this is equal to e to the power seven natural log 500 minus t with a minus sign as a result of chain rule. So this can be simplified to 500 minus t to the power negative seven. So using that integrating factor, our solution A satisfies 500 minus t to the power negative seven times A is equal to the integral of the function on the far right, which was 11 times 500 minus t to the power negative seven. To evaluate that integral, we're going to need to use power slash chain rule. So we get 11. We get a minus one from the minus t on the inner function. We get a negative one sixth from power rule. And then we get a 500 minus t to the negative six plus c. Therefore, after a little bit of simplification, we find that A is equal to multiplying everything by 500 minus T to the power seven, we would get 11 over six. We would get 500 minus T to the power positive one, so I'm not gonna write it, plus C 500 minus T to the power positive seven. Now let's go ahead and use our initial condition to determine the value of C. We'll need to be extra careful this time. If we set A equal to zero and T equal to zero, we get zero is equal to 11 times 500 divided by six plus C times 500 to the power seven. So negative 11 over six times 500 divided by seven copies of 500 is our C value. And we can simplify this a little bit if your heart desires. Uh, we can cancel one of the common factors of 500 and turn this into 11 divided by six, 500 to the power six. So what is the amount of salt in the tank at time T? The amount is equal to this expression with that value of C plugged in. Now, I almost forgot one final part of this question. Uh, in addition to finding a formula for A of T, we were asked, what is the domain of A of T? Now, this might seem like a strange question because scrolling down to the formula that we found, we obtained an A, which was actually a polynomial. Uh, all of the t's are contained inside quantities with positive exponents. So at a glance, it might seem like the domain is going to be all real numbers. But when someone is talking about a domain in a real world situation, they're not just talking about mathematical domain. They're talking about for which values of t does this formula make sense for use in this problem?
Thinking about the domain, thinking about the values of t for which this formula is valid, I should think about the values of t for which my original differential equation was valid. Before time t equals zero, I think it's implied that no salt water had been poured into the tank at all. So before time t equals zero, the salt in part of my differential equation is not valid, and therefore the domain does not extend to include negative times. In addition to that, when t exceeds 500, there's no fluid left in the tank. So if t gets larger than 500, then the tank has emptied, and once again, the differential equation that I set up doesn't make sense. In particular, if t is equal to 500, I find myself dividing by zero. So the domain, the times for which this differential equation actually is sensible, is between an initial time of t equals zero and a final time not exceeding 500 minutes. Once you hit 500 minutes, then the tank is empty and it messes with the entire calculation that we did to obtain this function a of t. So that concludes today's material. If you're mixing two non-reactive chemical solutions, then set up a diagram to, to show you the flow rate of the fluids coming into the tank with their respective concentrations, uh, as well as the flow rate of the fluid coming out of the tank and its concentration. Uh, be on the lookout to see if the amount of fluid in the tank is changing over time. Uh, if it is changing, it's going to affect your concentration of fluid coming out of the tank. And it will change it to something that's non-constant, which generally speaking has a slightly more complicated solution.